Hello, I'm Laura Serrett and welcome to today's Practice Development Day and the exciting launch of the Nursing and Allied Health Profession strategy for RDASH. I'm Laura Serrett, as I've said, and some of you may or may not know me. I am Professor of Community and Public Health Nursing and I'm also currently Head of Nursing at Manchester Metropolitan University. But I'm not here for that. I'm here really to share with you a little bit about myself and a little bit about the excellent career that we are all in, and that is around healthcare. I myself am a nurse. I qualified in 1986, and I did one of the first nursing degree programs that there were in the country. For those of you who weren't born in 1986, way back then, it was the time when nursing had just moved from being a SRN, state registered nurse profession, to a registered general nurse. And while now we have an all degree profession in nursing, like our allied health colleagues have had for many years, it wasn't something that was very common in, the, in that time. It took a long time for us to recognize the importance of good education and training to make sure that our professions are able to offer the best health and the best care that we can. Nursing and allied health professions are a science and an art. We need both those aspects of our professions in order to provide good care and to safeguard the public and more importantly, to develop and create situations in which our professions can continue to advance. A large part of that is how we are as individuals. I came from a very big family and we were very poor, although when I grew up, I never realized we were poor. It's only as an adult I realized how little we had. However, education and training were the key ways in which I was able to develop. Nursing has been a fantastic career for me. Through that career, I have traveled the world I have worked in many, many different countries and I've worked with governments, national, local and international. And because of nursing and because of working in healthcare, in 19, uh, 2018, I was actually awarded an OBE by the Queen. And that OBE was for services to nursing and to policy development. Today is the start of the strategic direction for nurses and allied health professions in RDASH. It's time for you to action the strategy which will give you the best advice, the best ways of improving the outcomes, the experiences and the experiences of patients and yourselves in this organisation. Enjoy today. Today's your day. Thank you so much for helping us to launch our nursing and allied health profession strategy. I just want to ask you a few questions about how you actually came about being a nurse. What was it that inspired you to think that's the profession for me, that's something that I want to do? It was really interesting actually, but I actually originally applied to do medicine and um, it was something I'd always wanted to be a doctor and the main reason for that was I wanted to work in the community and I wanted to work with people and help people have an equal chance of health. I did A-levels and everybody expected that that's what I would do. However, at my first interview for medical school, I went to the interview and actually the longer I was in the interview, the more people talked about the way in which the, as, we, as I progressed to be a consultant, etc., that actually I, I wouldn't have to spend so much time on the wards. I mean, this was the 1980s, so it was kind of a long, not like it is today. Um, and I just thought, this is just not really for me. What I wanted to do was to progress and actually be able to drive the care much more that happened with, with people every day. And so I decided on the train on the way back from London for my interview that I no longer wanted to do medicine, that I was going to be a nurse. Don't ask me where it came from. <laughs> my mother probably cried for a week because for her it was like her big dream to have a, a doctor. And it was really interesting because I then was in a bit of a quandary because nursing at that time was mainly trained within the hospital and really good nursing training there. But I had also always wanted to go to university. And then my careers teacher said to me, oh, do you know they've started doing degrees in nursing? And I was like, oh, that's interesting. So I then had to make a reapplication and applied for the nursing degree courses. And I was lucky enough to, to get on the programme at Sheffield City Polytechnic, as it was then now, Sheffield Hallam. What was interesting was that I had two universities that I well two polytechnics at that time that I was choosing between um, Sheffield and Leeds. And the only reason I chose Sheffield as opposed to Leeds because when I went for my interview in Leeds, it poured with rain. And when I went to my interview in Sheffield, it was sunny. Having said that, I don't think it was sunny another day in the four years I trained in Sheffield, but hey-ho. So uh, that's what drove me in the first place. Um, 
I came from an, a very poor area of Nottingham, um, which, you know, I suppose was part of what we would now call the slum clearances that happened in the kind of late 70s. Um, and what I noticed was that many people around me were ill, they were sick, not because they had major conditions or trauma, but just living was hard and... Mm -hmm. I kind of wanted to give everybody more of an equal chance of, of having better health. And that's where it, it came from. Fantastic. Thank you. Can you think of anyone in particular during your career pathway that stood out for you as a role model, someone that you thought, that's what I want to be, that's who I aspire to be as a nurse? Yes, I would say there were two people that I would, I would highlight. Now, one people may have heard of and one people probably haven't heard of. The first one was um, the first sister on my ward when I first qualified, um, and that was uh, Sister Cook. And I, my first job was at the Jessup Women's Hospital in Sheffield, and I worked on gynaecology and Sister Cook was the, um, the almost like the matriarch uh, sister on that ward and she was ferocious. She was ferocious but fair and she scared me to death but she was so good, so good with patients. She stood up to doctors or anyone else who tried to you know, railroad over the nurses or patients or anyone on her ward. But she was firm but fair and she really pushed me to um, be a better nurse. She really pushed me and challenged my thinking and I thought she was an excellent role model. Um, so because of her is the, is the reason I want, went to do leadership in nursing because I felt that she was re really, really good um, uh, sister, um, even though half the time I was scared to death, but it was really, really good. The second person people may have heard of, and um, that's Dame Professor Elizabeth Anionwu, who was the nurse who actually started off a lot of the sickle cell provision. And for me, Elizabeth was a mentor first and now is a really good friend. And what she taught me to be was to actually be myself in leadership and actually try not to emulate other people only in terms of their style and their commitments, but actually to develop my own way of doing things and to actually um, trust myself that I was good enough just as I am to do the job. Um, so those two people, I would say, at different ends of my career were probably the ones who shaped me the most. Fantastic and good standout leaders. Yes. People who demonstrated that you need to be authentic and in their leadership positions really made a difference. Absolutely. I mean, I think what these two women certainly had was great resolve at a time when um, almost like we have now where as nurse leaders they had to really stand their ground I mean Sister Cook which if you think about this was the mid 80s and it was working in gynaecology around what we would now call sexual health which didn't even have that label in that time and at that time we also had coming through the gynaecological wards and through um, the maternity wards many women who were you know, in the shadow of what was HIV and AIDS, which was a big pandemic at the time. And at that time there were, you know, now, you know, HIV and AIDS is a chronic condition. It's something people live with. In the 80s when we faced it, it was a time people were dying literally week on week. Mm -hmm. And particularly I watched Sister Cook fight for the rights of the women who were in what we would call risk groups to receive good care at a time when there wasn't really a protocol, but she really had her conviction. Mm -hmm. And similarly with Elizabeth Anionwu, she fought at the time for sickle cell to be recognised when it wasn't even listed as a medical mm -hmm. condition. And so I think these two women really showed how nursing provided good care for their patients. They also led care provision and divisions to make sure that people had the rights to good care, but they also stood up even in the face of, you know, if you like, no research evidence but stood up to actually make sure that what they recognised was unequal care was actually not didn't persist. I'd like to give us a key message to our young nurses starting out today thinking we, we in our audience we, we will have people who are just starting the career people who are quite a way down the career pathway what's the message that you would like to give to those nurses? I think for me the key message for nurses today irrespective of where they are in their career whether they're just starting, whether they're mid-career, or whether they're near the end, is the importance of being proud of your profession. I think equally it's the same for AHPs. I think we've got nurses and AHPs who, at the moment, are the bulk of the professions that are holding up the health service. The thing that is the greatest challenges we have now in the 21st century are not about curing people, it's about care. It's about helping people to live well with their conditions, and that's where we are the experts. We help people to kind of recognise where they are. We accept the conditions that they have, but we also help them to live within the 
grand scheme and recognise all the opportunities they have within that. And I think we need to remember that as a profession. As I said in, right at the beginning when I did the introduction, for me, nurses and allied health professions depend on the science and the art of our profession. And both those things enable us to give the best care. But when you start, you can sometimes feel like I don't know enough, you know. I remember having this phrase going around in my head the first time I was in charge on, on the wards, thinking, what do you mean I'm in charge? I don't know anything, you know. And that is a feeling that people have at each time they make a, a move in their, in their career. But remember, you're good enough just as you are. You've already been trained. You've been given all the ingredients. And right at the beginning, when you started your training, somebody in education, someone who interviewed you, along with your practice colleagues, saw in you the ability for an excellent professional. You were already chosen at that point. And now is the time just to go out and demonstrate the faith that people have already put in you. That's wonderful, Laura. Thank you so much.